Did you know that there are different types of ultrasonic clamp-on flow meters? That's right, ultrasonic flow meters come with two different types of technology, Doppler, transit time. So, which one's correct for your application? Let's find out, coming up next on Tech Review. That's correct. Clamp-on ultrasonic flow meters are available using two different types of technologies. We've got the ultrasonic Doppler and the ultrasonic transit time. Confusing. Don't know which one to use? Well, it's time for a quick history lesson. Well, back in 1977, my father, Dr. James Baird, and I started one of the first ultrasonic Doppler flow meter companies in the United States. The novelty, of course, was the ability to clamp or hold the sensor to the outside of a pipe and measure liquid flow with suspended solids on the inside. The ultrasonic clamp-on flow meter is perhaps the most innovative, Star Trek-like technology in the world of flow meters. Let's face it, clamping a sensor or transducer on the outside of the pipe to read liquid flow on the inside of the pipe is still pretty amazing. So, if you ask for an ultrasonic flow meter during that time, we would probably recommend an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter. Moving forward in time to the early 2000s, the ultrasonic transit time technology has evolved significantly. This clamp-on technology was much more sophisticated and worked on clean liquid applications. So, if you ask for an ultrasonic flow meter during this time span, you would have been questioned as to what your application requirements were. If you had suspended solids, we would have recommended an ultrasonic Doppler. If you had a clean liquid application, we would have recommended an ultrasonic transit time flow meter. Moving forward to today, the ultrasonic transit time technology has evolved to much more user-friendly technology with a wider application spectrum. Go ahead and toss in the old internet, making it completely accessible for purchase and rental. So it dominates the ultrasonic flow meter market. Needless to say, if you were to ask for an ultrasonic flow meter today, we would recommend an ultrasonic transit time flow meter. Yes, the ultrasonic transit time flow meter is the most popular ultrasonic flow meter, but it's not the solution for all non-contact flow meter applications. So, let's see how both of these technologies work. Hang on, it's time for science. Let's give some credit to Mr. Doppler. Mr. Doppler, a 19th century Austrian physicist, was best known for his paper on the Doppler effect. We use an ultrasonic Doppler technology today by clamping a sensor on the outside of the pipe. It continuously transmits a high frequency sound through the pipe wall and into the flowing liquid. Sound is reflected back to, uh, to the sensor from suspended solids or bubbles. If the fluid is in motion, the echoes return at an altered frequency proportional to flow velocity. So we need to have suspended particles for these bubbles or these sound beams to bounce off of bubbles or particles back to the transducer. If there are no suspended particles, then there's no reflection back. Much like police radar, if they zap your car going by, they'll get, send a signal out, get a signal back. But if there's no car going by, there's no reflection back. So an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter needs to have suspended solids in order for the technology to work. Now, to describe suspended solids is the biggest mystery. Just because a liquid is opaque <clears throat> has no relevance as to the process uh, suspended solids. So opaqueness means nothing. They usually represent dissolved solids. So uh, suspended solids required are usually 100 parts per million a suspended solids or aeration that are 30 microns or larger is pretty much the generic specification. If you got lots of chunks of stuff in the processed liquid, like a slurry-like application, a sludge application, a dredging application, an ultrasonic Doppler is the best technology. So to regroup then, ultrasonic Doppler flow meters come in all different shapes and sizes. You need to have suspended solids in the application for an ultrasonic Doppler to work. Just because the liquid is opaque, has no relevance to the amount of suspended solids in the processed liquid. If you're looking to bounce off aeration, if you've got more than 30 PSI, you're not having any aeration reflection, which is usually not the best solution. So 
You need chunks of stuff in the process liquid for an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter to do its job. Let's give credit to Laura Rayleigh for the book of the theory of sound back in 1877. Pretty much kick-started the ultrasonic transit time technology. An ultrasonic transit time flow meter works not by reflecting off suspended solids, but works on clean liquid applications. So the transducer in the lower left hand side would sound a sound burst across the pipe, reflect off the back wall and receive by the other transducer to the right or downstream. Notice the flow is going from left to right. We'd measure how long it took to get from the first transducer to the second transducer. And at the same time, the second transducer would send a sound beam from the right side and blast across the pipe received by the first transducer. And because it's going against the flow, it will take a longer period of time. This time differential that we have is the coefficient we use to calculate the velocity. Throw in the pipe size, we can now calculate volumetric flow or gallons per minute, something like that. So an ultrasonic transit time flow meter uh, will work on clean liquid applications, does not utilize uh, suspended particles in the application. Now it's a very high-tech uh, math equation, and that's what kind of got it started off slow in the industry because there's a lot of variables you had to put in, the pipe size, the sound speed of the pipe, the sound speed of the process liquid, sound speed of, of, of everything that's going into the application here. But what has changed over the years is it's become more uh, autopilot, if you would. So instead of putting all these various different pieces of information, it basically would have a drop-down window for water. You'd have a drop-down window for carbon steel. And once all this data is put into the flow meter, it will then present you with the exact pipe spacing before you even uh, turn the flow on. So ultrasonic transit time flow meter is a math equation, and you can see by this illustration, the sensor on the top of the pipe there basically would send a sound burst through this pipe and receive on the other side. Well, uh, clamp on ultrasonic transit time flow meters are all at a different angle, so that's why you can't interchange transducers for different manufacturers. We need to know the sound speed of the pipe material. Uh, uh, if you had a liner, and when it hits the process liquid, we have something called Snell's Law. Ever put a straw in a cup of water, it refracts at an angle. We need to know the sound speed of the water, and the same thing coming back out to the other side. So it's all a math equation. Today, pretty much a bunch of drop-down windows to provide this information, so it's relatively easy to operate uh, with today's standards there. So ultrasonic transit time flow meter, very accurate, very mass uh, specific, but uh, with today's technology, very easy to use. So you would use this type of technology again on clean liquid applications uh, up to about 2% suspended solids. The packaging of, of ultrasonic flow meters are available as a portable and a dedicated device. The ultrasonic transit time flow meter, since it works on the majority of applications there, is great for spot checks, uh, fl uh, flow studies, water studies, and temperature to it. Then you can do an energy study where you can monitor the flow on the supply, temperature in the supply, temperature in the return, and have all that data come back to you and calculate BTU. Now what's great there, it's budget available now. So you can either buy the technology or you can rent the technology. So there's uh, no limited access for you to use an ultrasonic transit time flow meter. And of course, for dedicated applications, with the advent of adding communications to this device, you can now use it to monitor flow. Uh, you can add temperature to it to monitor energy, and you can tie this now into your building automation system or your PLC as a variety of, of communication outputs. As far as the, uh, the energy use on a dedicated application, again, you would strap the flow on the supply side, temperature one on the supply, temperature two on the return. This is all being non-contact to monitor temperature differential with flow will give you energy. So ultrasonic transit time flow meters work great on clean applications up to about 2% suspended solids. They come in all different shapes and sizes, portable, dedicated. It's a wide variety of different manufacturers there. We use them for water, wastewater, energy, process control, water studies, I said energy use, and as long as you've got a process liquid inside the pipe, an ultrasonic flow meter, for the most part, can do that for you. So let's recap. 
the ultrasonic Doppler flowmeter applications have suspended solids, so they're used for wastewater, pulp and paper, sludge, slurry, dredging applications, and so on. But for cleaner liquid applications, you'll use the ultrasonic transit time technology that works on ultra pure liquids up to about 2% suspended solids. Thank you for watching our program. For more information on today's subject, check out our show notes and the links listed below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. As always, we would appreciate any suggestions of technology that we should include in our tech review program. This is Brent Brent Baird, my brother Doppler, my brother Transit for Instruments Direct. We'll see you next time. All right, that's a wrap. Why do you keep bothering me while I'm trying to talk? And what are you doing over there? How distracting is that? No, you don't get to talk. I get to talk. That's my job. You hold up the sign. And what are you doing over there? Cut that out. Jeez. Brothers. <laughs>